Okay, so I recently just picked up this Yamaha CR1020 stereo receiver, and I gotta say, I really like it, but it suffers from some pretty common problems of some old stereo receivers, which is all the pots and knobs are scratchy, and the lights have burned out in the VU meters. So I picked up a light bulb kit off of eBay to go ahead and replace those. And other than that, I just need to get in, give it a little love, and get it back up to 100%. The one other problem is there's a bunch of scratches on the top of this stereo from probably someone putting another piece of hi-fi equipment on top of it. But I think I'm gonna cover how to repair those scratches in the veneer in its own video. So the first thing that I did was flip the amp over to take out the screws to get inside. <laughs> Then once I was inside, thankfully the lights that I needed to replace were right on top and were easy to get to. You can see here that there are four bulbs stuck in the back of the VU meter and held in with rubber sleeves. So all I had to do is carefully remove the bulbs and then clip the wires on the old bulb and solder in the new ones. I opted to just replace the bulbs with regular bulbs rather than update to LEDs because I like the way they look better, but if they do burn out too quickly, then probably next time I'll just go with some LEDs. Once the VU meter bulbs were done, I had to move on to the bulb in the radio tuner indicator. Thankfully, I didn't have to mess around with it too much, particularly this crazy string setup, but I just had to remove two screws on the top and then clip out the old bulb and solder in the new one. At this point, I decided it was a good idea to clean up the inside of the amplifier. Whenever you open up an old piece of electronics, it's a good idea to remove as much dust as possible. Since electronics don't like heat, it's a good idea to remove that warm, fuzzy blanket that covers everything. You could use canned air or an air compressor to blow everything out, but I like to just use these micro bristle vacuum attachments to suck up all of the dust. Now that everything on the inside was clean, the last thing I needed to do was spray some deoxit into the potentiometers to clean them out and get rid of the scratches. Fortunately, even though it was pretty tricky to film, I could get in here pretty easily with the straw attachment on the can and get to all the pots to spray them without taking anything apart. And then I turned each knob back and forth to really work in the deoxid. And with that, everything that I needed to do with this amp is done. Now I haven't been inside too many vintage receivers to know if these things are common, but I thought there were a couple of things that were interesting enough to be worth pointing out. First is how there is a switch on the front of this amp for selecting between Phono 1 or 2, but it's actually hooked up to this drive shaft that runs all the way to the back of the amp where it turns the actual electrical switch. I would guess that this helps keep noise down in the Phono preamp by not having the wiring come all the way up to the front of the amp and then go back again. But I just think it's really interesting that they chose to solve that problem by using this kind of mechanical switch extension. I think the other funny thing is just how crazy this string setup is for the tuner. It comes from this heavy flywheel on the back of the knob, and then it comes down the back and wraps around the actual tuner, and then it comes back up and around some pulleys and ties into the indicator, and then does a full loop and ties back around into that flywheel. Also, there's this delightful little plastic jointed arm whose only job it is is to hold the wires from the bulb for the indicator. Now all that was left to do is to put this amp back together and it is all ready to go. Now most of you probably don't have this exact amplifier, but these two quick repairs are common things that need to be done on most old hi-fi equipment. So if you have some other piece of stereo equipment that either the bulbs are burned out or your knobs are scratchy, it's pretty easy and you can be confident that you can get in there and fix those things and get your old electronics working like new.